This ring is one of the final online apprentice projects. Check it out. I've got a coloured CZ that's 9 by 7 mil oval and I'm using 16 2 mm round CZs. Although this is made for round settings you can actually use it for oval as long as you only use the cross section. So there's a line going right through long ways there and short ways. So the short ways one is where the shoulders are going to be attached to where to cut the silver. Just at the contact points there. Again, I'm checking to see that the markings are perfectly quartered. Mark around the stone. When I look down, I can only just see the faint line around it. And just check the size. So we've got a 9x7, so I want to make sure it's the same size as, as the stone. I um, planned it's just a fraction larger as well, so I can trim that down a little bit later. And center of the outer stones should lark on the outside edge. Just a Take those lines right across and it should go right through the center mark there. Move it over as I go. This is also a pilot drill so I can do a little bit of alteration later and just make sure the spacing is right. As I say at this stage the holes can be moved a little bit if need be. So now I'm going to go through with a larger build, drill but put pressure on this side of the holes. To bring. This is a one mil drill. I can now plan for drilling for the claws for the to mark the position of where the claws are going to go. We'll work fine for this. Making sure that you drill really straight. Drill as a file and just carefully open them up until the wires fit. By doing this also, if I need to do any alterations, I can do that and move them a little bit. Before I finally push the claws in, I'll just make sure that the wire is nice and clean, ready for soldering. Fit them one by one now. Wire exposed, so I'm just going to melt the solder right on top. Apply direct heat there and then just allow it to run around. Now, it might be the case that they'll jump, um, the solder will jump over to the next one. Try not to put too much on there because I don't want evidence of solder on the other side. Height of the lowest one, uh, although they will need adjusting later on as well. Now, I'm going to leave around about a millimetre around the inside of the claws, so it won't be right up to the claws. I'll just cut in around about a millimetre or so, just to 
help me start the filing. Again, I'm not going too deep, I'm just starting the shaping. I'll now go over the cuts again with a square file and that's making the cuts a little bit wider so it's almost getting the scallop in shape correct now. Now all the settings are carved to the right shape now so what I'm going to do is start preparing for the outer claws. So I'm just going to cut right in the spot where the claw is going to go. I'm not cutting too far in. If you haven't got this burr, then you can use a slotting file. And as long as the slotting file edge is the same size as the claws that are going to go on, that will work really well as well. As well. So I'm cutting off around about 12 mil, and that should be plenty long enough for the claws and for the basket and solder it on and then with my tweezers just underneath I'll heat it up again and just let the wire settle into the bed into the groove done you might find a a more comfortable way of doing this operation if you're finding that's starting to happen. I just find it's a very efficient way of soldering multiple claws. Now I'm leaving about two mil of the claw at the top there, which is plenty for the setting later on. Before I quench this, I'm going to just check that all the claws. So let me just shorten them first, and I'll probably need to shorten them a bit more later as well. Now if I push the two end claws from the long ends over first, and just see where they meet up. And this is also going to determine the height of the ring head as well. So. Find the easiest way to do this is to use a pair of chain nose pliers and just push the claws down with those. Now it's all going to bunch up very tight in there, so I'm going to have to cut. Still need to push them down further and lower the basket but before I do that I'm going to just make them a little bit shorter and 
then just go around with the mold disc again so that can tighten up. So make sure you go around both ways so that the ends become pointed. That's how it should look. You should have the same shape and not angling off. So now I'll make the bezel. So I'll just shape it as close to the right shape as possible. It's going to be more of a round shape, but I can squeeze it into an oval once I've soldered it. It does need opening up a little bit. And I'll just keep trying as I go. set that up for some towards where this bezel is so I'm just be very very careful might need to just get in with a flat graver at the very point of where it's connected just to clean off any excess solder and shape it properly. And this is 2.7 uh, 2 wide, 1.5 thick and it's just over 7 centimeters. So I'll make a ring and I'll solder it, doesn't matter what solder you use because we're going to op open it back up again, but I'll solder it together just to form the right shape. So sure there's enough left over to make the shoulders. It's also going to be easier to file this to the shape of the shank rather than the shank to the shape of the bezel. So I'm going to put just make sure I get it lined up perfectly. So to do that, I'm going to mark the shoulder um, claw. It's easy to get that wrong, so I'll just mark the two shoulder claws. And with that in sight, now I can make sure that I file. The flat spot in the right place. Further into the basket work and just make sure that the angle of the opening matches. If need be, I will change the angle of the cut on the ring so that means I need to file a little bit off this side here and the opposite side on the other one. The shoulder's lined up properly, so I'll set that up for some. It's up to you. I'm pretty sure you'll get away with medium now. But to do that, I'm just going to mark off where I think they should attach to the shank, so I'll just use my file. Um, and just drag it back at the point that I've decided on and ideally a shoulder should gradually sweep into position so you don't want it dead straight it looks a bit um, 
stiff that way. So that's where it's going to attach and just to make sure I get the right spot on the other side I'll use my dividers. Cut a line across. And use my square file. And you'll see I've I'm cutting an angle that will allow the shoulder to rest into the groove square on this way so if I tilt my file so that I've got the um, the sharp part of the square file facing me that will be close enough to the right angle but we'll and now I'm going to shape these to give them a little bit of a sweep uh, I'll just use my pliers and my half rounds, although you can use a ring bender, it'll give it a nice even curve. Just work on getting the, the fit onto the ring a little bit better, so I'll just file a bit deeper with my square file. So I'm using easy solder, I'm just going to get the top joint done first and solder to fill any gaps so just make sure that that's the case for yours as well and then I'll finish it off do the other side and once I've pickled it I'm going to tumble it for a while to clean the inside of the setting top part of the settings the same shape so this is a 1.9 so it's not exactly the same size as the stone it's just a smidgen smaller and I'm running it straight down so if you go around just make sure that you can position the stones level and that's now level with the This is a 1.8mm ball bear and I'm just again going around the setting. This heart burr is 2mm in diameter and I'm just going to put a little cut on the inside of the outside claws. hope that makes sense. I'll secure those five first of all and what I'll do is I'll just start pushing the outer claws over so I'll just push them against the inner claws so about a mil uh, from the stones I'll just cut in and just wobble it around there and that'll just shape the grain. Now that should secure it 
as it is. So I'm cutting down and into the claw. So you should be able to see those little grains there now. Got a number 11 beading tool. So a 10 or 11 should do it. And just form a bead. Knife edge needle file just to file the claws down and making sure the safety edge is against the other claws so it don't, don't cause any damage. Using the extra large beading tool again just to shape the outer claws and get the final tip of the claw onto the stones. Now for the centre claws I can use this large beading tool. This is actually a, a number 21 um, because it's not going to damage the outside of the claws there. It's cupping the tip quite nicely. So I'll just run around the tips with this. Be very very careful around them. And there we have it. And if you want to train to be a jeweller, check out my online training course. Or if you just like to look at the videos, give me a thumbs up and subscribe.